It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 299. We got to bring you a gift. The gift of boldness. Boldness for what? Boldness to have the backbone, the intestinal fortitude, a pair of them, to believe God and trust God in your life. Talking to two of you. Talking to those of you that are believers. And number two, I'm talking to those of you that are about to become believers. Now, I, I, I'm reaching my market. <laughs> some of you listening to me, you have slammed me and said some of the ugliest, trashiest things about me. And I laugh so hard because I know I'm getting outside the church world. And you got a grandmama or a granddaddy or a mama or a daddy or a brother or a sister or a daughter or a son that's praying their heart out for you to listen to me. <laughs> Lord dealt with me. I, I, to be honest, I got frustrated. I, I preached in near about every state in the United States of America, including Hawaii. And I got frustrated in going to so many different kinds of churches. And so many of them were like this. Well, what you got that we don't know, boy? And thank God for the internet. I'm reaching California. I'm reaching England. I'm re reaching Brazil. I'm reaching New York City. I'm reaching places all over the earth. I'm reaching Canada. And people say, and, they, and, and people, I get, I get responses all the time. People say, I didn't know what the hell you were. I'm sitting there watching this thing. Next thing I know, I'm praying with you and, and making a confession that Jesus is Lord. And I'm choosing to believe in my heart that Jesus, you died for me and that you love me. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead for me. That's the reason I do what I do. Lord dealt with me about seven years ago now. Go back to wearing a cowboy hat. I don't do suit and tie and all that junk. There's no way in the Bible says you need to wear a suit and tie. And there's so many people that just turn me off because of that. You're just religious and legalistic. And you ain't got enough power to blow your nose. And that's the reason people have been leaving your church by the millions. And the tens and the ones didn't take didn't take many to leave for you to near about close up shop. And a lot of you have closed up shop. But I'm telling you, you are my market, and you are listening to me right now because somebody that loves you been praying for your butt. I could say ass or a double s, but I'm trying to be nice. But the whole reason I'm sharing is because Jesus loves you just like you is right now. I didn't put my mosquito spray on, so I'm being attacked right now. I'm right in between thunderstorms and tornadoes right now. and uh, Just got a moment or two to jump in here and share. Hope you're listening to me. John 3.16 says, for God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son so that you would not perish but have everlasting life. Now, it's funny. We do a lot of hunting down here in Mississippi. I raised up hunting. I hunted everything you could hunt. We grew up 
eating wild game and I've, I've eaten so many so much deer I go around pawing the ground and snorting and wanting to butt my head with something and, and I've just about got burned out of eating so much venison over the years the Lord the Lord put it in my heart 43 years ago to go win the lost and it's very likely that you are one of those listening to me but then then very likely there are some of you that are believers listening to me you have a desire to win the lost and you're listening to me because Holy Spirit led you to listen to me so you can learn how to win the lost for Jesus I ain't here to try to scare anybody out of hell but I'm here to tell you how much Jesus loves you just like you is right now I, listen I've been through the phony church thing and there are some good churches out there and there ain't no perfect church out there and I thank God for the local church especially those that are winning the lost and those that are following the leading of Holy Spirit got that mosquito right there now listen to me really strong because Jesus loves you so much See, what, what's different between Jesus and all the religions of the earth? Number one, he ain't a religion. And number two, he's a rescue. And number three, why you want to act a fool and say, well, I know somebody went to a church down there and they blah, blah, blah. That ain't got a blankety blank thing to do with you. What's got everything to do with you is what happens when you die and you'll stand before God. And I personally want to want to see you stand before him and go, Thank you, Lord, I found Jesus while I was on the earth. It's too late when you leave your, your body. And that's the reason I preach the gospel like I do. Listen, I could have done a whole lot of things, but my heart, and like Paul said, the love of God constrains me. And I'm out here, we just, I mean, it was pouring rain just a little while ago, and it, they got another front coming in. I normally like to preach at daylight when the sun pops over the horizon, but just too much going on to, to do it this time. Of course, the lighting's perfect with the clouds and stuff, but I don't care if you think I'm the biggest fool on planet Earth. You got somebody praying for your butt. That you'll listen to me. Jesus gave his life for you. But it's up to you to receive that free thing he did for you. There's no strings attached. It's like God put in a spiritual bank account salvation for you. But if you live your entire life and never make a withdrawal by saying, Jesus, you are my Lord. Father God, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead for me. That Jesus died for me and you raised him from the dead for me. And I receive you in Jesus' name. If you refuse to do that, hey, you're on your own, dude. And, and, but I'm standing in your way. See, some of you listen to me. You're like, what the hell am I listening to? Oh, I, I get, I get, so, I mean, when I get some of the comments on this show, like, and I just laugh. I've been ridiculed ever, uh, ever since I started in the ministry 43 years ago. And a lot of churches ridicule me, but I'm going to tell you something. I can start naming names of people of all walks of life that have been touched and reached. And I won't try to give numbers. I ain't into all that. Because I know some pastor of 17 people down here, down the road, may have prayed with the person before I prayed with them. And I ain't going to try to take, take credit for that. God gets all the glory anyway. You say, David, you don't know all the junk I've done. Shoot, you don't know all the junk I've done. I'm going to tell you something. Regardless, Jesus loves you. I've ministered with a guy that killed somebody with two hammers. And they finally let him out of prison because he was doing so good and changed because he found Jesus. I've ministered with that guy. He was genuine as he could be. The guy that started the first school shooting in the United States of America right here in Mississippi 
dear friend of mine spent time with him again and again and again and again at Parchman Prison. He said, David, I know he's born again. I know he's found Jesus. Now, now wouldn't it be just crazy that, that you listen to me right now and you, you decide to just give me that right there? And you, you decide to reject this gospel that I'm sharing with you about Jesus. And there's a man that started the first school shooting is in heaven and you end up in hell because you rejected the love of God. See, the deal is, another mosquito, the deal is, is he loves you. But the greatest thing about hell is that you go, oh my God, I'm separated from God for eternity. And ain't no going back. I know there's folks that preach purgatory and they, they say I'm going to purgatory and I want to know, is that New Mexico? <laughs> is that in Arizona? Is that in Kansas? Or is that in, in Pennsylvania? I think you near about every state's got a purgatory. Listen, the Bible says to be absent for the believer. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh, I can tell you all the stories how I've been, how I've been burned by religion and dead traditions in the church world. And I got churches, they've rejected the heck out of me because I preach in a cowboy hat and I preach barefooted. Hey, knock yourself out because I've got an audience right here that is tremendous. I think it was week four last, 2,100 people watch this show. And some of them, some of them just call me an idiot. It's some pretty ugly thing. I just laugh and laugh because I know I'm reaching my market. My market is not dead churches. If you're in a dead church, come out. Be thou delivered in Jesus' name. But but I'm telling you, you can spend time with Jesus on your own. Get to know who he is. You should be doing that every day anyway as a believer. And so many people just, if I can just go to church on Sunday morning, everything will be all right. That's works. This is a free deal. You can't do anything good enough to earn what was done for you through this rescue. So now I'm going to read you something from the B-I-B-L-E. I'm going to read to you out of Mark 9, verse 14. This is going to be really, 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 really good. And I'm going to beat this storm here in Jesus' name. Now when they came down the mountain to the other nine disciples, they noticed a large crowd of people gathered around them with the religious scholars arguing with them. That's what the religious scholars are good about doing is arguing. I ain't got time. I'm keeping my pearls around my neck. The Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine to be trampled underfoot. And there's people say, well, you ought to respond to some of that stuff. Well, if I'm led, I will. But I'm too busy. I ain't got time to argue with people about stuff. There are plenty of idiots out there that want to argue. The crowd was astonished to see Jesus himself walking toward them. So they immediately ran to, to welcome him. Notice they wasn't running to welcome these other turds. T-U-R-D-S, turds. Google it. Say, what does turds mean? And Google will tell you what turds means. What are you arguing about with the religious scholars? He asked them. A man spoke up out of the crowd. Teacher, I have a son possessed by a demon that makes him mute. I brought him here to you, Jesus. Whenever the demon takes control of him, it knocks him down, and he foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth, and his body becomes stiff as a board. I brought him to your disciples, hoping... <coughs> They could deliver him, but they were not strong enough. Got that mosquito. Jesus said to the crowd, why are you such a faithless people? How much longer must I remain with you and put up with your unbelief? Now bring the boy to me. You know what causes faith? Hanging around Jesus. 
You know what causes doubt and unbelief? Hanging around people full of doubt and unbelief. And they and business is a booming. There are plenty of them around here. I ain't one of them. I don't talk that old talk. Well, I'm, I'm 69 years old. I played football so hard yesterday morning. Actually, this morning, when my quarterback, Scott, he's 63. He one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. Pitched baseball. He put that football everywhere I go. He put it right there perfectly. These other guys try. I won't even bother to run with some of them because they can't throw it where I'm going to be. Scotty can. And he's 69 years old. I was soaking wet this morning with sweat and then did yoga. I don't talk all that junk of doubt and unbelief. You, you see, most people quit living Oh, 30 something years old. Oh, I'm getting old. Yeah, that's dumb as dirt. That's dumber than dirt. You live to be 100, you got 70 more years to go. Why are you talking like that? Oh, boy. Boy, now that I have your attention. So Jesus walked up and said, What are you arguing about with the religious scholars? You know what an expert is. That's a little spurred away from the house. A man spoke up out of the crowd. Teacher, I have a son possessed by a demon that makes him mute. I brought him here to you, Jesus. Whenever the demon takes control of him, it knocks him down and he foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth. And his body becomes stiff as a board. I brought him to your disciples, hoping they could deliver him, but they were not strong enough. Jesus said to the crowd, why are you such a faithless people? How much longer must I remain with you and put up with your unbelief? Now bring the boy to me. So they brought him to Jesus. As soon as the demon saw him, it threw the boy into convulsions. He fell to the ground, rolling around and foaming at the mouth. Jesus turned to the father and asked, How long has your son been tormented like this? Since childhood, he replied. It tries over and over to kill him by throwing him into fire or water. But please, if you're able to do something, anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, What do you mean, if? Woo, here we go. Here we go. We about to we about to we about to set the hook, baby. Jesus said, "What do you mean if if you are able to believe, all things are possible to the believer?" And when he heard this, the boy's father cried out with tears saying, "I do believe, Lord. Help my little faith." Now, you know the the scripture says, "Only believe." There's a song that goes on Libby Lee, all things are possible. Hope you're listening to me. I do believe, Lord, help my little faith. Now, when Jesus saw that the crowd was quickly growing larger, he commanded the demon, saying, Deaf and mute spirit, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The demon shrieked. And threw the boy into terrible seizures and finally came out of him. As the boy lay there looking like a corpse. Everyone. Everyone. Thought he was dead. Jesus didn't. But Jesus stooped down. Gently took his hand. And raised him up. To his feet. And he stood there completely free. Afterwards, when Jesus arrived at the house, his disciples asked him in private, Why couldn't we cast out the demon? He answered them, This type of powerful spirit can only be cast out by fasting and prayer. Now, there's a footnote. I'm going to read the footnote. Then I'm going to have to go and come right back. As translated from the Aramaic and some Greek manuscripts, many reliable Greek texts leave out 
fasting. However, the word fasting was found on a fragment going back to the 3rd century. See also Isaiah 58, 6. Our lives must be saturated with the presence of God through prayer and fasting in order to conquer the evil that is in the world world and hiding in the hearts of mankind. Now, one of the things I share, I got about two or three minutes before I got to go and then come right back. Most believers, I've preached in churches all over America and in many foreign nations in 43 years. And the problem with most believers is that they don't have a daily relationship through prayer, which is communicating with God. I, I talked to one guy about his prayer life, and he said, well, it's all about relationship. And I thought, well, you dummy. Relationship is prayer. It's talking to God. It's communicating with God. The, 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 the form of prayer that is ridiculed the most is speaking in unknown tongues. I'm going to do it right now. Brukunish. Ble français, boutoua, fais-le-vous, koumane, de le roman, redish, de le lopran, kwe. Don swe, dish au roman, de le yadabre gouche, de le blaclans. I ain't afraid to do it. I pulled up to the, the drive through at the bank and didn't realize they had the intercom on. And I, we have prayer every morning at 427 and 1130, Monday through Friday, to about 1 o'clock. We've been going past 1 o'clock lately. We ain't doing it because we're in works. We're doing it because the grace of God's being multiplied to us. But it's a discipline which is kin to the word disciple. They're close kin, folks. They're closer than first cousins. They're closer than brother than brother and sister. Hope you're listening to me right now. Some of you have been so burned by church and by religion. And you're sitting there listening to me. It's like, what is different about this guy? I dare you to say out of your mouth, Jesus is Lord. I dare you to say, I choose to believe. Jesus, you died for me. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says if you do that, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, says if you do that, then you're saved. You're going to heaven. But but ain't we got to do all A guy told me at lunch today about three men that died in the last three weeks. He went to all of them's funerals. He said, if anybody's going to be in heaven when I get up there, it's going to be those three fellas. I said, well, what about me? You got your doubts about me, don't you? He started laughing so hard. Let me tell you something. You don't go to heaven because you've been a goody goody two shoes. Because you went to school and made great grades and, and you became so successful in life, you can do all that and die and go to hell. Because it's about what you say out of your mouth and what you believe in your heart. I got to go. I'll be right back. It's all about your heart, it's all about your mouth. The thief on the cross beside Jesus, both of the thieves on both sides of Jesus were mocking, making sport of him, cussing him. And one of them changed in a moment of time. And people get upset at me and say, why don't you talk about something under the new covenant? Well, and I ask them, I'm talking about Bible experts. Woo! Where is that thief today? Is he in hell or in heaven? Wow! Come on now, have some integrity. And be honest. Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise. The other one went to hell as far as we know. But in a moment of time, this thief that was on a cross beside Jesus was mocking him, making sport of him, making fun of him. And all of a sudden he changed what he was a saying out of his mouth and what he was a believing in his heart. He said, you know, he said, Lord. Well, the Bible says if you confess Jesus as Lord. He looked at Jesus and said, Lord, before Jesus even died. He said, when you get to paradise, well, that proved right there. He believed Jesus was about to be raised from the dead. He said, don't forget about me. You know what the Lord said? And this is, this is, this is what burns people in hell more than anything. Jesus said, today you will be with me. In paradise. How can that? How can it be that simple? 
because the Bible says so. And I'm just going to be blunt. You know, the Bible talks about a dumb ass in the Old Testament. You know who's going to call you a dumb ass if you reject the love of Jesus? I don't care if, how much you've been hurt. My feelings have been hurt a million, billion, trillion times. But I don't live by my feelings. I live by what I believe. Faith is of the heart. Faith is of the heart. Faith is of the heart. Faith is a spirit. So say this after me again. Say, Jesus is Lord. Say, I choose to believe. You died for me. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. I receive you in the name of Jesus. Hey, I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling, especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week till for about an hour to an hour and a half. Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m. We have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel- evangelizing just like through this show and we're reaching people one-on-one and through meetings and there's a lot of fruit and we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the Great fruit. And he's been off of drugs. And he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer, daily in the Word with us, and in growing with a group that loves him. So that's just one of the stories, some of the fruit. There's many more, and we'll share others. Thank you for helping. I know you want to. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.